What's going on duels? Today I'm going to be deck profiling an updated sub tear deck profile under the July 2019 Forbidden and Limited list. It's August now and I thought it'd be a great time during the quote unquote off season or just when the new season is about to start to profile an updated sub tear deck because it's actually a very viable deck, specifically a very viable control deck. For the new format, we're going to get into it. Make sure you guys check out all the links down below. I recently got affiliated with TCG Players. So if you guys want to buy any of the cards you see in this deck profile or get any cards or products, make sure you guys use my link down below. You guys can help my channel grow by doing so. I'm going to be promoting that a lot more. We're going to get into it. First and foremost, we begin with the obligatory triple sub tear guru. This is the most important monster in the deck. This is the monster you always want to start out every duel with. You want to resolve this monster as soon as possible. And he's just a great card because he allows you to search all your sub tear cards. But in addition to that, allowing you as a quick effect, if you ever control another sub tear card, being able to use the effect to book stuff on the board and uh, change their position is also particularly useful. This card, along with all the other, you know, face up and face down manipulation effects of sub tears is great with Crackdown, which came out not too long ago. Uh, I really like it in his deck and from Dark Neo Storm, Crackdown is fantastic. And I'll show you guys that card later, but this is the most important monster of the deck. Three sub tear gurus. Uh, probably the second most important monster of the deck is three sub tear fiendus. She's an omni negate hand trap. Unfortunately, you can't use more than one of her per turn, but she is just great in the sense that she just negates absolutely everything. She's complemented really well by sub tear guru, just being able to search her and then being able to protect whatever you have, plus multiple other hand traps. This is pretty much just like a hand trap negation dot deck for the most part, and then it plays a beatdown strategy in between the hand trap negation effects. Uh, essentially, you're going to be utilizing cards like fiendus and all the other hand traps you guys see. To halt your opponent and then you're going to use cards like sub guru to beat your opponent down for tons of damage using uh cards such as sub battle so um it's really important to have these you definitely want to open this up with uh sub guru and then her other effect obviously being able to bring back a monster uh is particularly useful as well especially mid to late game when you're trying to grind out your opponent if they're not playing a combo based deck it's great because you can obviously just grind out against the other control decks uh, the one sub tear behemoth umistrix this one's not as useful as much as I'd like it to be it's usually just better against a lot of the worst decks so I do find myself siding this out a lot I do like being able to banish my opponent stuff and just plopping it out on the field but early game it's really not that great turn one it's really not that great so uh, just in general it is kind of a handicap you don't really want to see this card it's kind of a brick in some cases and I would almost honestly consider dropping this card out if it wasn't just for the utility it provides and then same thing with Subterra Nemesis Archer, she's really just there as more utility. Um, in most cases, she's a little bit more useful than, than Umistrix, just because you can actually play her. Uh, her effect being able to, you know, like whenever you're booking your opponent's stuff, being able to just spin a monster away is really cool. But then obviously if your opponent kills her in any way, you just immediately get to special summon a Subterra monster from your deck uh, onto the board. So she's very useful in that regard, kind of like a mini recruiter slash floater. So I do like her applications. Um, I definitely wouldn't run more than one of her or the Umistrix. And then the remainder of the hand traps uh, that kind of complement this deck. This is ma mainly, honestly, if you really think about sub tears, it's really similar to what Salmon Grates are in the sense that it does its own thing. It tries to beat you down, but then it just tries to handicap you with all the different uh, hand traps. So uh, first and foremost is Triple Ash Blossom. This is pretty much the uh, you know the standard hand trap for every deck, uh, or at least one of them. And then three copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. I think this is probably one of the most powerful hand traps this format because. Uh, right now, the way it is, I just feel there's just so many different combo-based decks, specifically all the different Gar Dragon combos, Dragon Link decks, Thunder Dragon variants, uh, Thunder Dragon Orcas dra um, with Gar Dragons, like so many different combo-based decks, Pendulum variants still use that, and this really just hurts all those decks. Uh, any of the combo-based decks are really hurt by Ghost Ogre because it also clears the resource and usually they need link markers, whether it's there because they're doing Guard Dragons, whether it's because uh, Pendulums are doing Electromite. Really, just in any of those circumstances, Ghost Ogre is extremely useful and you just don't want to have this card at any given point, uh, which is why I maximize on, on it. And it's also really useful against any of the rogue matchups such as True Draco hitting Diagram, also very useful against uh, some of the Altergeist matchups in certain cases. But it can also be played against uh, the, any lingering Sky Striker players that have multi roll. So Ghost Ogre is just a great all around hand trap right now. And then the last main deck hand trap is three effect failures. Uh, I was running uh, Impermanences as well as Phantasmes in the main deck. I think these are also great options. You guys can run them if you happen to have the room or in the side deck. Um, the thing with Impermanences, uh, yeah, it's great that you cannot get hit by uh, Called by the Grave, but I feel like right now where the combo decks are, is they don't really even need Called by the Grave. If you notice, a lot of them don't necessarily need to run it because they just have so much synergy, so many cards that allow them to keep going that even if you stop one thing with a hand trap, they just have another backup card. And if they have Called by the Grave, if you have multiple hand traps 
instead of having another card that allows them to keep going, they're only using that Called by the Grave to stop their initial play. So, um, in that particular line of play that they started out on. So, um, while it might be useful early game because you can play multiples of this, you know, and obviously it's another backer that you can set, potentially bait out some uh, removal with it. Uh, generally speaking, I think uh, I like Effect Veiler a little bit more uh, because it also doesn't necessarily conflict as the game goes on. Because with Impermanence, you'll have to set it, and, and like with Veiler, you'll just be able to play it anytime you have a board. And in some cases, like you, you just may not want to set it, you may just want to keep it in hand uh, in case you're reading backer removal. And then with Phantasme, it's also a really good game two and three. I'd probably consider siding this, if anything, or maybe running like two main deck copies of this. The downside with Phantasme is it is a dragon, which actually conflicts with there can be only one. So if you have Subterra Guru, which is the main monster you're always going to have on the field, you can't really take full advantage of Phantasme in most of those cases. So um, I felt that Veiler was just the best uh, optimal decision for this deck, given the current state of the format and the way that a lot of the combo decks are being played. But you could very well easily replace uh, Veiler or change up some of the ratios on these if you wish. Um, so yeah, I think nine hand traps, you know, as far as generic hand traps, is more than plenty. You're playing a 40 card deck, so I think it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. And then you obviously have Fiendus, so that's 12 if you if you want to count her. Um, obviously, Fiendus is a little bit weaker going second because uh, if you don't have an established subterra card, you're not going to be able to use her. Whereas the other hand traps, you can just very freely and loosely use them. Wait, wait, wait. Before we continue with the rest of the video, I want to remind you guys to subscribe with notifications turned on to never miss a video and check out some of my other recent videos you may have missed at the end of this video, along with any of the links in the description to help my channels grow. Thanks for watching and let's get back to the video. Uh, for the spells, uh, going into the spells, we begin with Triple the Hidden City. This is the most important spell card in the deck. Uh, it's what allows you to basically dig your deck for your subterra cards but also have the attack negation and just the, the the position manipulation it does everything you want it to do in a field spell card it's definitely very powerful which is why we also run the terraforming for consistency to ensure that we get it and then for some draw and search power i'm playing three copies of pot of extravagance you rarely go into the extra deck um so three extravagance is pretty much a must in this deck and then i'm also playing three copies of pot of duality i rarely play three dualities in most decks um, something like Desires and Extravagance is a little bit different than Duality because unlike these cards, Duality is technically a one for one. So if you ever draw multiples of this, you, you only need to resolve one because you're already getting two cards off of that. So even if you have another one, you still have the same amount of cards you started with. Whereas with like, uh, which is like with Duality, if you resolve it, you're just trading one card for another and then having another Duality means you have one less resource because you start in a hand of five, right? And let's say you have, uh, let's say you have two dualities, two extravagance, or, or let's just say either one of these circumstances plus any three other cards. With the case of dualities, you're swapping that duality for any other card, but then you have four playable cards because that duality is not playable, right? Whereas with extravagance, if you have three other cards and you play that extravagance, you're getting two other cards plus those three you had, and even though that extravagance isn't playable, you have five cards now that you can utilize. So uh, th it's really important, in my opinion, to maximize on extravagance, but duality in this deck, it's more so a filler. You just want to be able to tutor everything out to get into Guru, um, which is why, I guess, in a deck like this, it's not really that much of an issue to run multiples. Um, I do find myself siding out one a lot. You could very well cut it along with a couple other cards. There's about three cards in the main deck that I'm like testing around that are flex spots, and the duality is certainly one of those. Um, yeah, it's just drawing consistency power. That's really what you want with a deck like this, because you just want it to do what it does every single time. And then the worst card in the deck, in my opinion, but also with one of the highest utility ceilings as the game goes on, is Subterra Cave Clash. This is actually the 40th card that I that I added into the deck. I'm not really that big of a fan of it, but I do respect its utility. It allows your Subterra monsters to gain a little bit of a, bit, bit of a boost, which is kind of useful. But the main function is that once per turn, when you have a subterra monster and it deals damage to your opponent, you're able to just add a subterra card from your grave back to your hand. So you can basically utilize that to recycle your fiendesses, which is the main purpose of this. Um, but again, this really isn't that good early game. It's really only good in those grind out scenarios where if you're playing against a you know a combo based deck, you're not really going to get that opportunity. So that's why I don't really like this card. I'm trying to figure out what I want to run instead of it. I might replace like one of the dualities and maybe the cave clash for like two main deck super polys or something of the sort. Um, or maybe just some more traps. We'll have to see. But uh, it's definitely good against the grind out decks, against all the like fair control based strategies. It's really useful because you're obviously going to be passing back and forth and being interactive with them. And Fiend is just is supreme in a situation like that. For the trap card, it's a little bit of support that this deck gained, even though it lost one terraforming, was three Psalm Judgments. Three Psalm is ridiculous in this deck game, two and three. I mean, being able to stop evenly matched, twin twisters, red reboot, just so many different cards you can stop with this, and you're never going to die with it because uh, obviously you only need to pay half your life points, but also being able to just negate your opponent's attacks with Hidden City 
and uh, just have all the different uh, position manipulation is really, really useful. Of course, if you're trying to do it on Link Monsters, you're not gonna be able to like set them or anything like that, but you can usually set your own cards and then use Hidden City to negate your opponent's attack. So in most cases, uh, it's not that much of an issue if you're paying life points, but this card is just an all around great trap card, my favorite trap card in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, you definitely need three of those in the main deck, in my opinion. Even though it's not that great going second, you definitely need to see it. Similarly, uh, some people play two of this. I think it's really important to play three. Uh, is three sub terra final battle. You could very well cut this to two. This is again one of those flex spots, but I, I'm really liking three right now because you don't really need to search it. Um, your optimal opening with this deck is to have at least sub terra final battle, a fiendus, and a guru. Like you need to ha start every single turn one with it with all like one of each of these cards. That's like your optimal turn one plus whatever else you have. It doesn't matter what else you have, but you need to open it up with at least one of those because sub terra final battle. Every single one of the effects is useful, and the advantage to a card like this is you can have multiples of this, and you can obviously use them, so it's not really a problem. Uh, and the fact that it gets reset is also just supremely useful. Uh, keep in mind that with this card, you're able to change positions, uh, either face up, face down, whatever you need, but then you're also able to make your monster, specifically Guru, extremely big by combining in its attack and defense to give it to its attack and defense. So obviously your Guru being 16 by 18, it's always going to be 34 by 34 whenever you use battle on it. Now, uh, the final effect being able to prevent your sub tier cards from being negated is also really useful. So you can utilize this against stuff such as uh, maybe potentially like called by the grave because you can just negate your opponent. If like they call by the grave, your uh, your fiendus, they're not going to be able to negate it. So there's, there's just little applications like that. Um, if they're ever veiling you and permanencing you, literally anything or even ash blossoming your guru. So it's just Anytime your opponent's negating your stuff, this is just what you you want to do. Like this is the guard you want to go to. This is the card that allows you to win all your games. This is effectively the, the win condition of the deck. Cause like, yeah, you can search and negate your opponent's stuff, but if you're not able to kill them, what's the point, right? So you definitely need sub terra final battle. Um, I think three is really important. Like, yeah, you can search it, but you really want to start off the game with it. Uh, for those other traps, I play three. There can be only one. This is the best uh, floodgate right now, I think, just because uh, you can play going first or going second. While I recognize the utility of something like Summon Limit, it's not as good going second against combo decks because uh, they've already established their board, whereas there can be only one. You can still flip this against an established board, or you can have it preemptively, and it's still very useful. And in a deck like this, I mean, you have a lot of different stuff. Like, you have Fairy, you have Reptile, you have Spellcaster, you have Dragon. So you have a lot of different stuff, and then with your uh, with your Crackdowns, taking different monsters isn't really much of an issue. So you're always going to have different stuff on your board with this. And the last trap card of the deck is three Crackdowns. This card's really great. Obviously, a lot of people don't understand the implication. Yeah, you can't chain to negate an effect, but you just do it preemptively, which is effectively the same thing. And with a card like this, it's really cool because with all the face up, face down uh, manipulation that you have in this deck, you can just flip the monsters that you take face down with really just any of your cards, any of your sub terra utility cards. And once you do that, you're actually able to keep the monster and then you can attack with it, you can use defect, whatever else you want. So uh, Crackdown with all the, the, the position manipulation is just supremely useful. Like I highly encourage you guys to play three of this card in the deck. That's it for the main deck, 40 cards, uh, pretty straightforward for the most part. Like, as I said, the cards you guys can kind of toy around with are maybe the third battle, uh, the duality and the cave. Those are probably like the three cards I would consider messing around with in terms of ratios. Uh, for the extra deck, you don't really go into it, but you can because of Crackdown and because of uh, the side deck Super Polys. So uh, the cards I run in the extra deck are, uh, first and foremost, one Dingirsu. This is if you're playing against Orcist and you happen to take anything with Crackdown, you can just overlay any of their Link Monsters. You can just overlay for into, uh, into the Dingirsu. Uh, for Super Poly targets, I play uh, three Starving Venom, Fusion Dragons. These are just obviously the most important one against all the combo decks. Like right now, it's just combo decks are everywhere, man. And Guard Dragons and Pendulums and all those decks, they just do so, so much. Their boards are so resilient. It's so difficult to break them without a Super Poly that um, you always want to have at least one in your extra deck. On the off chance, you, you banish a couple of them off of your extravagances. Uh, and then the rest is pretty much just filler. So I have like for Cyber Dragons, I have Double Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, Double Chimera, uh, Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon, uh, some more uh, fusions are include double Predaplant, Dragostopelia. Uh, this is a little bit more useful against the uh, against the uh, Pendulum matchup because they get out like Odd-Eyes Vortex and stuff, so you can use this a little against them. Um, it's also pretty good against heroes, like if they have Dark Law or whatever else, because obviously you prize a fusion and a dark, so you can make that against them. Um, and then just random one-ofs. I just have a single copy of Mud Dragon of the Swamp. 
uh, pretty much just for strikers. That's the only time you're going to make this. And then Violent Chimera just for Salomon Greats, which you'll probably play. But again, I almost don't ever want to side in Super Bowl against that matchup. It's really rare that I've wanted to. Most of the time, you're just grinding them back and forth. But you can, so uh, the Violent Chimera is there when you need it. And then I do run three Link Monsters that you can potentially make, including one Phoenix, just to pop back rows. Uh, Avermax, which is particularly useful, especially with Crackdown, because if you ever take multiple Link Monsters, um, this requires two monsters, especially something from the extra deck, so you can actually overlay into um, Avermax, which is fantastic. It's just a big beater um, and is very resilient. And then same thing with Blackluster Soldier of Chaos, three monsters with different names. All your monsters that you're going to be summoning have different names. So if you ever even just like summon a hand trap plus like Guru and like a crackdown monster that you stole, you can just make Blackluster of Soldier, uh, Soldier of Chaos and just get in there for free damage. Um, the card's insane. Like this card, it's it's really cool. It's a, it's a nice utility card to have. Um, you definitely don't 100% need it, but I like it in the deck. So, uh, moving on to the, the the side deck. The side deck's really up to your local meta. Um, this is just what I found to be the most useful for my particular uh, circumstance and just how I would play. Maybe going into event, this is like the most generic template you guys can have. So, uh, three Dino Wrestler Panker Tops. This is just for all the control and fair decks. I definitely wouldn't put this in against any of the uh, combo based decks, except maybe Pendulums. You can kind of put it up against them depending on which version you're playing against because you can just like run over Jackals if they have those, if they're playing that version, or you know, bait out their Odd Eyes Vortex. So there's a lot of stuff you can bait out against that deck, but against most of the other stuff, it's, it's a little bit difficult to play through. Uh, three Lancias. I'm not even sure how I feel about this right now. Obviously, it's, it's, it's not bad against any of the uh, Thunder variants, but I feel like that those decks can just still do so much between like Saryuja, dropping Colossuses, like doing so many things. They can still just do a lot even under Lancia and because of dangers and such. Like, I don't know, like Lancia is like, it's good, but like there's times where they can just play through it and that really, really sucks. So I'm not sure how I feel about this. Maybe I'll swap this out for something else, but for now I'm just running this as is. Uh, three evenly matched. Again, another kind of just like subpar side deck card, but it's not terrible. It's really just good against the fair decks. Uh, Mirror, Altergeist, um, Strikers, True Dracos, really just any back row prevalent deck. This is this is like your best friend. Uh, answers their boards ASAP. Uh, against the combo based decks, three Super Polys. You could very well main these, to be honest. I was going to main them. Um, but I don't know, I feel like you have so many hand traps in this deck and you just have so much resiliency with that there can be only ones that you almost don't necessarily need this main, but um, you definitely want to have this to some capacity. So you could very well take out like a duality in the sub tier cave clash to like main two of these and then you could have like two extra side deck spots. Or you could take those out, keep these in the side. Uh, one thing that I mentioned earlier, I'm not currently running like uh, Phantasmate and Permanence, but I think uh, Phantasmate is really useful against those combo matchups because you can hopefully draw into your Super Poly because it's one of the only few cards that you can draw to actually break a board or try to break a board. So uh, Super Poly is really good. I definitely consider running Phantasmate just because of that. And then the last three cards in the side deck are two copies of Mystic Mine along with a copy of Metaverse. Um, You'd rather have the Metaverse as opposed to the third mine. I don't really have room for a third one, obviously, but um, the, the third, the Metaverse acts as like a third mine, but it also doubles as a card where you can actually just like force the Mystic Mine on their turn without practically playing. Like you can play a bunch of stuff and you just Metaverse them, but then, you know, as you normally would, but you can also just use this to search your uh, hidden city if you ever need to. So um, I'd rather just have a Metaverse as another option there. And then the mines are obviously like, all oh, this is just for combo based decks. So. Um, you, you just want to have multiples of these to be resilient and hopefully handicap them. The downside with mine, of course, in this deck is you're probably always going to have Guru, so you want to be careful utilizing these. Uh, in some cases, you may just like want to not plop a Guru down immediately. You, you want to wait till they have more than uh, a few monsters, so then you can like mine them and then set up Guru for multiple negations and hopefully break their board of the battle. Uh, and then by that point, you can have like sit Hidden City, and there can be only one, and Solemn, and whatever else you might need for disruption. So even if they have anything to try and play through the Mystic Mine once you cleared or they clear, you'll still be able to play. So uh, that's it for the side deck. Uh, you can try Third Mine if you wish. Other cards you can try are three Phantasmes or three Impermanence. These are also particularly useful. I just haven't found the room for them yet, and um, I definitely want to play the Phantasme maybe in the side deck if I find this space. But uh, that's it for the deck. If you guys happen to enjoy it, please make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Uh, that is it for the sub terror deck under the 2019 Forbidden Limitus for July. Of course, this is bound to change as the format goes on. I pretty much built this deck with the impression that uh, combo is going to be the most prevalent types of decks right now. Of course, there's still other decks. There's still Salamence. There's still Strikers. There's still... Honestly, we're pretty much still in the same format, more or less. Like, the format really hasn't changed all that much. Decks have kind of lost a little bit of power, but for the most part, everything is still pretty much the same. So, if you guys enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe. If you guys want any of these cards here or any other cards, please use my TCG player link down below. Uh, it's my affiliate link. You guys, basically, I get a little bit of kickback from you guys. 
um, and it just helps my channel grow along with everything else. So see you guys next time and make sure you guys are checking out those links out. See you guys and Time Wizard signing off.